the spoon goes in your baby's hand before you even start solids. Hey moms and dads, my name is Karina and I'm passionate about feeding babies. I raised two independent intuitive eaters and this is a compilation of my best videos on this topic starting solids 101. I share best feeding products, my tips, common mistakes, tell you how to know your baby is ready to start, give you a list of best first foods and show you my baby trying solids for the first time. In this video I will share with you 10 items that you will benefit from when starting your baby on solids or doing baby lead weaning and the first one will be a high chair obviously so the one I had was foldable from Graco with removable tray and you know washable and I loved it I used it for both kids also want to mention that I think having it like one piece with no fabrics makes it easier to maybe like spray it wipe it and that's it for your convenience of cleaning any high chair and the floor under high chair I would highly recommend a mat that you put under high chair I've used it with both of my kids and it was so helpful because of course the food falls there are spills and we have a carpet around our you know table area so definitely recommend getting one even if you don't have a carpet because it's just makes the cleanup so much easier and I keep using it when they do a play-doh or whatever so I will link everything down below for you next you're gonna need a couple of types of bibs first of all those silicone bibs that have a really good and steady pocket over there that will catch most of the food most of the food that's why you're gonna need a long sleeve bib at first I start like undressing my baby to the diaper to feed her so that I can just wash her but I was told that that could create a habit to eat without clothes so she could be doing that in the restaurants potentially so we got those smokes and again I'm using this steel I'm using it for crafts for playing with water definitely something I highly recommend because it will save you so much cleanup you can take them to restaurants even and with the silicone bibs I have one in my diaper bag all the time because it's just like an essential my older one wore a bib until like at least three years old at home and in a restaurant because it's just very convenient and she didn't mind and then of course you need plates and spoons and uh, I would recommend definitely making sure that the plates have a very good suction so I wouldn't recommend getting plastic plates because if you want to put warm food in there you know eating from plastic is not the best idea so I went with silicone plates and bamboo plates again I will link the ones I used down below some of them come with spoons I will link a couple of types of spoons that I think are the most helpful for different stages first you need very tiny ones very tiny silicone spoons then you're gonna need a little bigger spoons and of course you're gonna need a couple of types of plates so good suction bamboo or silicone but keep in mind that you won't be able to put a bamboo plate in a dishwasher so it's a little more hand washing but the thing with silicone in dishwasher too um, it absorbs in my experience absorbs lots of this detergent smell into it and somehow after a couple of cycles in the dishwasher uh, my silicone baby plates start smelling like soap even after hand washing them and everything so I feel like your best bet is just hand washing your baby plates and spoons anyway so maybe just go with bamboo ones your choice they also have those new spoons and forks with like a stopper on it so that your baby doesn't put it way too deep in their mouth and they're great for teaching them to self-feed because like this is so important the spoon goes in your baby's hand before you even start solids. I mean, this is what I preach in my baby food videos. And if you'd like a coaching session from me on solids, particularly with your situation, if you have any troubles you run into, definitely reach out to me. I'll leave in my email down below. You can shoot me an email, you can write in the comments and we could arrange a coaching session with you because solids are not easy i took a course myself i still had lots of questions and still had to learn lots of things myself so i'm here for you if you need me and let's move on to the next item you will definitely benefit from straw sippy cup from munchkin this particular sippy cups have been the best and they're suitable if your baby is breastfeeding because 
some sippy cups they need the baby to bite on uh, like the silicone and that might teach them biting you uh, you don't want that happening and apparently there are some sippy cups that are not good for uh, the mouse development of your baby and these particular straw sippy cups are safe for breastfed babies for the right development of their mouth so the earlier your baby will learn how to drink from a straw the better and these are just just great they aren't leaking if you put them together right they don't require them to tilt the bottle and if they do the weight on the straw underneath helps them to get the water out so i bought so many of these over the years certainly the best sippy cup in my opinion next if you are going to make your own baby food which i highly recommend for the most part do a little of research watch some of my videos about store-bought baby foods and how to make your own baby foods because it's so easy and you can pre-make it in advance so some things that you will benefit from some items products that you'll need if you want to make your own baby foods yes there is the whole machine you can buy which has a steamer and a blender in it but the products i will tell you about right now you just might have them on your kitchen so hand blender you need a hand blender particularly because in the beginning the portions you're going to be making are small so the best thing to use is a hand blender to make a puree but if you do you know baby lead winning approach you're not really gonna need that i started on purees just to be on the safe side and then was giving them to hold a piece of that vegetable but again it's a different topic so you're gonna need some kind of steamer i have a rice maker that has a steamer tray you might have some kind of steamer that comes with your pots set so you need something to steam vegetables and poultry with because steamed is best they just keep all the nutrients instead of giving it to the water if you boil the vegetables then you're gonna need some containers to potentially freeze the baby food or at least store it in your fridge and i love the kia baby containers because they fit in my baby bottle warmer so my child didn't take a bottle for the most part but i ended up using my bottle warmer to unfreeze and warm up baby food it was so convenient because i batch made baby food and then i just pull it out of the freezer put it in this baby warmer set it on the right timing and it's ready because i don't like using microwave we don't even have a microwave but you could and those containers that i'm talking about they are also microwave safe so just throwing in a couple of ideas for you if you need more details on making your own baby food and links to all of these products they will be down below in this video i want to share how i knew that my four months old baby was ready to start solid my daughter started solid at six and a half months old i never ever ever saw that a four months old baby could be indeed full on ready and have all the interest and all the signs that you need to start solid and be enjoying it leonardo is a bigger baby so at four months checkup we found out that he has doubled his birth weight so that was one of the signs that he's ready our doctor told us wow exclusively breastfed baby and growing so rapidly if you feel like you have lower supply or he's hungry don't give him formula introduce solids and honestly i thought that was not very correct advice I'm not a doctor, but I fully believe that the main sign of your baby being ready for solids is being interested in solids, showing the interest in foods. I was quite sure that my body can produce as much milk as my baby needs. And then literally a few days later, my baby started to be really fussy when nursing. If the milk is not there right away, he would move around and cry and get off the breast and come back. And he wasn't willing to work for it as he used to before. I was like, no, probably he's in pain. Maybe he's teasing, maybe, you know, sleep regression and he's lacking sleep. And that's why he behaves like that. I did not want to believe that I was not able to produce enough breast milk for him, which ended up being not exactly true. I 
am able to produce enough milk, but he was ready for solids. And that's when I started to notice other signs. And like I said, the main one, he became so interested in what we were eating. Like he would drill holes in us and our food with his eyes. Like he was just jumping out of uh, his uh, bouncer or trying to grab my food if I would be holding him while eating. One day he was looking so much at the banana my toddler and I were eating. I gave it to him. I gave him basically to lick a banana and he was so into it. He wanted more and more and was screaming for it. And um, the next day he was looking at that banana again, even with more interest. And then I noticed that he started chewing and swallowing a lot of saliva, plus the fact that uh, it seemed like he was not happy with my supply and all of that together. Besides that, he started to want to sit up on his own so badly. He's still not sitting up and he has been eating solids for two weeks now. He's not sitting up on his own yet and that's totally fine but he's trying so hard. He always wants to sit up when I feed him like half lane position so that, you know, there is no pressure on his butt. It's not very good to sit your baby up when he's not doing it by himself yet. So he has been fighting that. And when he's in his bouncer, he wants to come up and all that. So we started solids at four months and like three weeks old. He was 10 days away from being five months old and it has been going so well and he was definitely hungry you guys now he's eating actually even two meals a day and he's still a little fussy when my milk is not there but he is a happier baby now and he still has that huge interest and another thing that proved me right that he is ready uh, he is not pushing his food away he is opening his mouth he's grabbing spoon by himself he's trying to feed himself he's not pushing food away i'm definitely not force feeding him if you've been around you know i'm all against that and uh let's sum it up so my baby doubled his birth weight he seemed hungry and it seemed like milk was not enough for him. He was super interested in foods. He was looking at them and basically licking his lips and doing chewing motions. He's trying to sit up on his own and he also does not push the food away. So look for these signs in your baby. I hope this helps if you also got a bigger baby and he's only four months old and you're also doubting if you should start. I would suggest you to try and see again if he is still interested, try and see if he's opening his mouth and also the reaction of his body. How is his stomach? Is there any gases? Is there constipation? Which if you don't know is normal. We are still dealing with some, you know, uh, getting used to the new foods and we had to give him some prunes, introduce prunes sooner because uh, he needed some help going number two. And uh, also I am trying to don't give him any foods that can make him gassy. So I'm being strategic with that. His skin uh, and his mood is great. There is no reaction on his skin. His mood actually improved. He is even happier baby now. And uh, this is like the biggest entertainment for him him and now he gets so upset when he is not part of the meal sometimes we try like 90% of the times to have him at the table either someone is holding him or he's in his high chair even if he's not actually eating with us but in case we just prefer to leave him in, like in his bouncer on the floor He's screaming, he wants to see what is going on. He wants to see our food, he is reaching for it. And I also gave him like a little um, silicone thing with holes, I'm not sure what's the name, is it Nimbler? I put a frozen uh, squash in there, that's just what I had on hand for um, just entertainment. But also I thought and still think that he might be teasing and something cold can soothe his gums. So he has been enjoying also this little thing. So yeah, this is a whole new world for him, a whole new world for mama and a lot more work for me now, but I'm hey loving guys, it. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a very exciting day. Leonardo is trying his first 
real food. We're introducing solids today and uh, we're starting from butternut squash because it's in season now. It's not very sweet. It shouldn't make him gassy. And that's what I had on hand. I just cut up some butternut squash, took out the seeds, peeled it and steamed it in just my rice maker, which has steaming tray. And then I cool it down and then blended it with my breast milk for the similar flavor for him and help for digestion. I'll be giving him butternut squash for the next three days, today and two more days. So I made a little more than he'll have today and I put it in the fridge. And now the whole family is going to sit at the table because that's an important part. He needs to be a part of the family meal from the first time he's eating solids. We have our TV off and we're gonna give him his own spoon from the very beginning. This is probably enough for the first time just to make sure he does not overeat because even if he wants to at this age you shouldn't be giving him more than a certain amount of teaspoons and tablespoons so for the first time i think he got in maybe two teaspoons of puree also i'm offering him a little water in the bottle because that's when you start solids you need to offer water and uh, because he's so little, I don't go for any sippy cup right now or a glass. Um, I feel safer to give him water in the bottle. A couple of days later, I did offer him water in a glass. I got some courage and he did just great with it. And now I give him water in a cup or a glass. This is his first water ever. And now I'm gonna go ahead and breastfeed him after the meal so that breast milk helps to digest all this. And today I'm going to walk you through five common mistakes that parents make when introducing solids, pressuring your baby to eat. It includes starting solids way too early or just a little too early when your baby is just not ready. You need to look for those cues for that interesting foods, you need to develop it yourself. If you pressure your baby to start solids when he or she is not ready, it's gonna be a problem later on. If you pressure your baby to finish their food or you force feed them with a spoon, it's gonna cause a problem. Don't do that. Mistake number two, introducing fruits first. And this will not necessarily mean that your baby will become a picky eater, but it might. You should start solids with more of a bland taste. I started Michaela on vegetables, particularly on broccoli puree. We did purees in the beginning or zucchini puree, avocado, mashed avocado. I sometimes I would add my breast milk to it for better digestion and for a more common taste. Some people start with cereals, if it's a good quality cereal, even if you buy it at the store, which I have a video review of all the store-bought cereals, it should not have any sugars or any natural artificial flavors, nothing like that. It should be bland and as simple as it can be, one ingredient only. So if you start with tastier foods like banana or apple or strawberries, they might refuse vegetables later on. Mistake number three is feeding your baby separately. Not when you're eating. You need to be eating with your baby together. 
This is how they develop their interest in food. This is how they learn everything. This is how you raise a good eater. Make sure even if your baby is in a high chair, that he or she sits as close to the table as possible. Even if it's just you, if you're a stay-at-home mom, even if it's just you and the baby, eat together. And you guys, I've been there in the beginning is really hard to enjoy your meal and it constantly gets interrupted, but it will pay off. Mistake number four, introducing utensils when you want them to use utensils, like at around a one year mark. This is not right way to do it if you want them to be independent. Introduce utensils before introducing solids. So the best way to do it is sit your baby in the high chair with you and your family when you eat, even before you start solids. At like four or five months of age, give them a little spoon for babies and a plate and you'll see how your baby will start mimicking you. This will definitely help later on because baby needs to have an example first of all and second of all it takes time for them to learn the motion of putting the spoon in their mouth it's a whole journey but don't take the spoon away never even if you do feed them with a second spoon that's fine always give the baby their own spoon let them make the mess there will be a lot of mess involved but eventually they will eat very clean Michaela does a great job from like one year old i have a whole video again about how exactly i taught her to eat with a spoon and i did not invent any unique strategy or something like that it's just those simple steps that if you think about it it makes sense and mistake number five is using screens while eating don't do that your baby will refuse eating without screens eventually and the problem with it not just that the thing is your baby will not be involved in the process of eating he or she will be just watching the screen and concentrating on what's going on there and couldn't control the amount of food he eats just like me and you adults do that too we shouldn't be watching anything or even listening to anything even if it's a podcast while eating when we don't concentrate on our food we don't catch the moment when we're actually full we tend to overeat it can lead to obesity for our kids in older age it can lead to just not knowing what they like, being a picky eater. So get your kid involved, make a mealtime, a special time, sit with them, eat with them all the time, utensils always available and no screens. And if you have, I will give you a list of 10 best foods to introduce to your baby first when they're about four to six months old, when they are ready to start solids. And so oftentimes pediatricians would suggest you start with a rice cereal, but I personally believe it's one of the worst things you can start solids with because it has zero nutrition, it might be high on heavy metals. So I think starting with vegetables is the best not even with fruits because my opinion but i really think that giving them really sweet flavors like bananas even apples is just not very necessary you will have plenty of opportunities to introduce them i personally started one of my kids on butternut squash so this is number one on my list it was in season when he started solids it's a very nutrient dense food and it's pretty flavorful it's a little sweet right because their taste buds are so pure and clean they can feel the taste of the plain vegetable so much more than we can and so that's another note here i believe into not adding any spices salt especially in the very beginning at least for the first couple of months because it's just not necessary let them enjoy the real taste of food and i started my kids on purees then we kind of did a baby led winning mix with purees but you can do both with butternut squash another great vegetable to introduce to your baby first are sweet potatoes they are also very nutrient dense they are in season almost whole year it's so easy to cook to make a puree or just mash it with a fork right and same goes for baby led weaning when you can cut it up in a little strips they can hold certainly a great idea to add to a puree your breast milk or formula so that it gives them a more familiar taste and if we're talking about breast milk especially it helps with digesting this food with my first i started actually with broccoli and i think broccoli is the best cabbage 
family uh, vegetable because for example cauliflower mostly gets people really gassy and you really don't want that for your baby so broccoli are not very flavorful which is also a good thing but you can add your breast milk or formula to it to make it a little more familiar and tastier for that matter so broccoli are number three on my list and there is no particular order to this you can start your baby on any of these products whenever they're ready but of course discuss this with your pediatrician first let's move on to what i think about introducing allergens and i totally agree with what research told us not so long ago the earlier you introduce allergens the less chance your child will have an allergy to those foods and i think that one of the best products to give to your baby as a first food is also a plain whole milk yogurt especially if you breastfeed and don't eat dairy that would be a great thing to introduce first it's also great for teaching them to eat with a spoon because Yes, it's gonna be a lot of mess, but the texture allows them to dip the spoon in. You don't really have to scoop anything and get some of that food inside and feed themselves. Because I'm also a bit advocate about giving the spoon even before your child gets any food in their mouth. I have a whole separate video about that. I'll link a lot of good videos about toilets and introducing them and all the mistakes parents make down below. Check it out after this video is done. And let's move on to a next allergen food that you should be giving to your baby as soon as possible eggs they say that uh, there is a bigger chance that egg white can cause some kind of allergic reactions so where i'm from in ukraine they say that it's better to introduce egg yolk first but here in america uh, they actually tell you to do a scramble egg for yourself and your baby like whenever they're ready it could be their first food you just definitely have to watch for a reaction especially with those big allergens like dairy and eggs don't introduce any new foods for at least at least three days and watch your baby's reaction if there is any rashes I definitely call your doctor but i did introduce yolk first i would do a hard-boiled egg separate the yolk and the white mash the yolk with a fork add breast milk or formula and give it to them as a pure textured food you could also try to scramble just an egg yolk i did that with my first that didn't turn out so great so you can choose yourself here what to do but eggs are definitely very nutrient dense healthy food and also an allergen you should be introducing early on let's go back a little to vegetables i have two more veggies on my list beets and carrots it's not very common to eat beets here in the u.s but in ukraine beets is like one of the most popular ingredients because ukrainian borscht is made with beets and they're very healthy they are pretty sweet and definitely very fun because uh, the color is different uh, it actually leaves pink stains on their face and hands but hey it's something different to try and the most important thing it's healthy it's cheap and another option to give to your baby because i remember very much when there is time to introduce something else i run out of ideas and this is a video for you to come back to to get some ideas of what to give to your baby next and carrots obviously a healthy quite traditional option to give to your baby and just a reminder of course they have to be fully cooked either you're doing a puree or baby led weaning they're also on the sweet side but again nothing like a banana Oh, and one more, of course, there is an avocado. Avocados are just extremely healthy and they are fatty. So far, there was just a yogurt that I told you about that has fat. Make sure you get a whole milk yogurt, obviously, and plain. Like I said, just making sure you heard that part. We don't need any sugar in baby's diet and whole fat, like in yogurt, same in avocado, but, you know, they come from different sources, but yet your baby's brain needs fat. Animal fat like from yogurt, let's say, and also from fruits, vegetables. I think avocado is a fruit. Anyways, avocado is a great one to try. Maybe you consider trying it as a first or second food because it has very little flavor, but it's mushy. It's also nice to grab it. You could potentially add a tiny bit of salt to a food like an avocado, like a food that has very little flavor, but very nutrient dense and healthy. I was told by a pediatrician that there is a new study uh, that shows that actually babies do lack nutrients that they get from salt. So I've introduced a little bit of salt a little later on to bring up flavor of some foods. Let's say oatmeal. It's next on my list. I just 
said in the beginning of the video that rice cereal is the worst thing you can start solids with but oatmeal actually a very good option it's certainly tastier if you add breast milk or formula to it and i would add a tiny tiny bit of salt to bring up that flavor same thing with avocado i would advise to stay away from introducing quinoa in the even maybe in the first year of life because i introduced quinoa to both of my kids when they were maybe like nine months old and both of them had a little bit of a constipation problem after it i'm not sure what i did wrong i tried to make it really thin you know with lots of water or breast milk but nevertheless they still did have some stool problems after it so certainly stick with oatmeal there are definitely other options for like cereals like barley maybe even millet buckwheat those are healthy whole grains that you can make into a cereal i have a video how to make your own baby cereal i will link down below it's so easy i also have lots of unpopular opinions on store-bought baby foods once again we'll have lots of videos about that and here i want to mention another thing you can either buy at the store or do yourself hummus hummus is also a great first food one of the first foods let's say there are some good quality hummus out there in the store but you really need to look for one you can just buy chickpeas and make them into puree add some olive oil because olive oil is also a great way to introduce you know some healthy fats you could also use a key butter or even regular butter after you introduce dairy in your oatmeal and you could use olive oil in hummus a very nutrient dense and protein rich food it's not something very typical to give to your babies but it's definitely a great way to introduce them to more flavors and give them nutrient dense food and just remember that in the first year of life you're just introducing them give them a big palette of flavors give them a spoon don't forget that one and if you have any questions about starting solids or maybe you already ran into some problem i offer coaching sessions with me one-on-one -on -one about solids so leave your email in the comments if you would like one and i'll shoot you back an email with all the details leave me a comment give this video a like subscribe and i will see you in this one